Welcome to Other Levels. Today, we're going to learn how to create the Employee Turnover Analysis Dashboard in Excel. Whether you're just getting started with Excel or you're an experienced user, this tutorial will help you master essential techniques to build powerful and interactive dashboards that drive insights and improve decision-making. This dashboard has a lot of powerful features. In the first section, we introduce the HR department, which is responsible for the dashboard, followed by the dashboard title and a brief description. We then see the total headcount from 2018 to 2024, which is 100 employees. Using creative slicers, you can filter the data by department, like customer support, finance, and so on, and all the dashboard values will update accordingly. We also see the number of active employees, the exited employees, and the turnover rate, which is 35%. Next, we have a department-wise turnover analysis. This bar chart shows the different departments, sales, info section, finance, HR, marketing, and customer support, and highlights which departments have the highest turnover. The exit reason breakdown is presented in a pie chart, showing the top six reasons for employee exits, retirement, health issues, termination, personal reasons, better opportunities, and relocation. Following that, we have the yearly and quarterly turnover trend. This line chart illustrates the turnover trends on a quarterly basis from 2020 to 2024. Then, we look at the new hires versus exits over time. In this line chart, the green line represents new hires, while the red line shows the exits. Next, we have the tenure before exit analysis. This column chart shows how many years employees served before they exited, with an average tenure of 1.7 years. Finally, we have the exited and active status by gender, where the green columns indicate active employees, and the red columns show those who have exited. The data set for this dashboard is located at the bottom, and you can easily update it. Once you make any changes, the dashboard will automatically reflect those updates. The data table includes employee ID, department, join date, exit date, exit reason, status, gender, and age, and it currently holds data for 100 employees, but it can accommodate up to 100,000 employees. Click on this icon to get to the pivot table sheet. These icons have a hyperlink to get us to the pivot table sheets. You can visit our website other-levels.com to get this template. And for training and practicing, you can now download the dataset for this dashboard for free from our website. First, we will talk about how to get the total headcount from 2018 to 2024. As we can see, it is 100 employees. This data table has a column called the employee ID. We need to get the employee ID to get the headcount. Let's click on any place in the data table, then go to the insert menu, and then click on the pivot table. It will ask us to choose where to place the pivot table. Choose the range in the second sheet, which is the pivot table. Now, when the pivot table appears, we want the employee ID to be in the value field. We will change the sum to count. Click on the pivot table field options icon, and we will choose count and click OK. Now it will show us that there is a 100 employee ID. How do we transfer it? We can do it by using the text box in the dashboard. From the insert menu, click on the insert text box, and we will open the formula bar, and we will select the cell in B3. In B3, we made an equal, and we chose the meet account, which is a value of 100, from the pivot table directly. Why did we do this step? We did this step because we cannot link the text box directly with the cell in the pivot table. That is why we need to take the values that we need from any pivot table in a separate cell from the pivot table, and then link it with the text box in the dashboard. This is how we find the total headcount. So, by creating another pivot table that categorizes employees by status, active or exited, and linking those values to the dashboard, you can easily display both counts. Then, calculating the turnover rate by dividing the exited count by the total headcount gives you that percentage, 
which you can also link to a text box on the dashboard. Next, creating a department slicer with icons. Now finally, let's go over how to create and customize the slicers or filters in our dashboard. First, select any of the pivot tables in your report. Then, from the Insert tab in the ribbon, choose the option called Slicer. From the Slicer field list, select Department, and click OK. Now, we have a slicer showing all six departments. Let's place this slicer on the dashboard. From the Slicer options, we'll increase the number of columns to six, so all department names appear in one row. We can then stretch or resize the slicer to fit the layout we want. After that, we'll customize the slicer's theme, font, and background color to match the dashboard's dark purple ribbon. Make sure the font is clearly visible in white color for better readability. To enhance the design, we'll insert an icon or photo for each department from our company resources. Crop each image into a circle shape to give it a modern look. Then, place each icon next to its corresponding department name in the slicer. This will give us an advanced and modern slicer design that not only looks professional but also improves the data analysis experience by allowing quick filtering by department. And with that, the slicer section of the dashboard is complete. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a like, leave a comment, and share it with others who might find it helpful. If you're interested in getting this template and practicing with the dataset, just head over to our website at other-levels.com. And stay tuned for our next video, where we'll continue building and enhancing this dashboard. I'll see you in the next tutorial.